In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit. Amen. By the sacred heart of Jesus, and the immaculate heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the divine will, I enter into the holy divine will. Come, divine will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. <coughs> okay, so everybody ready? Everybody's here? Okay, so today we're going to we're going to talk about um, oh thanks, the first sheet. We're going to talk about uh, the round of creation, the round of redemption. Again, this is uh, the most important prayer uh, that Jesus taught Louisa. Uh, Somebody called me the other day and they were very upset because how dare we have a secret prayer that nobody knows. This sounded very, you know, like Freemasons, you know, you have a secret prayer. Well, the word secret is a a prayer, it's it's a word that doesn't mean hidden, it means private, it means it, it belongs to um, who the owner of it. For example, the secret archives of the Vatican are not secret. They're not, no, you know, nobody knows about it. It, it means these are the personal property of the Pope. Uh, so the secret archives of the Vatican, where Luisa's writings were uh, for 58 years, um, they, they belong to the Pope. And so the secret prayers that Jesus and Mary are going to teach us are the prayers that they prayed, okay? What we have learned over the last 2,000 years is how to pray the prayers of the saints. Uh, St. Saint Francis, Saint, uh, the prayer of St. Francis, the prayer of St. Ignatius, the prayer of St. Teresa, and, and how beautiful these prayers are. But Jesus is now saying, I, I want to teach you my prayers, my hidden prayers, the prayers that Adam prayed before the fall. And so uh, this is why it's, it's very, very important that we begin to learn this prayer. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so at the very top, you'll see uh, the prayer is the round of creation and the round of redemption uh, linked to the servant of God, Louisa Picaretta. We have to be linked to Louisa because it's her prayer. Uh, this is what Jesus and Mary taught Louisa. So we know what we've learned is vocal prayer. We've learned mental prayer. We've learned contemplative prayer. Uh, these are the three main prayers of the church. And now God is going to teach us uh, through Louisa, the round of creation and the round of redemption. These prayers are um, most important for this time. Uh, Jesus said, I've saved these writings for the worst of times. Uh, so the times that we're living in, we need more prayer. And it's nothing's going to happen um, without prayer. Uh, again, the saints have said, those that pray go to heaven. Those that don't pray go to hell. Okay, what the Lord is now teaching us is how to pray 
uh, the round of creation, basically how Adam prayed before the fall, how Jesus and Mary prayed. When Jesus went into the desert well, and for 40 days and 40 nights, what did he pray? Uh, when Jesus went, uh, went, went up to the mountain, what did he pray? And, and this, is, this is the prayer that we're learning. Uh, again, uh, it's nothing that, um, it's nothing that uh, we have really seen before until uh, this time. So, number one, we started, this is part one. There's going to be three parts to this because uh, it is very important that we learn uh, how to pray. For example, what we have had over the years is the, um, the little prayer book, the Round of Creation, Round of Redemption, uh, uh, that you know people read and pray. And again, it's very, very good. Um, but what you see here is this was put together by Sister Asunta uh, before we had all the writings. Uh, this was done really before uh, uh, 1996 when the writings came out of the Vatican. So what we're doing is we're going to try to figure out how to pray this because nobody knows yet. Nobody knows how to do this. Now, why would that be so? Well, we got the writings out in 1996, and we had the first translations in 2005 in English. So it's only been a matter of years, a few years. And we need to study this. Uh, we need to um, learn uh, what Jesus and Mary have taught Louisa, the little newborn. Uh, and again, think about that. Jesus calls her the newborn, uh, the firstborn of the divine will. You have Adam and Eve, and their firstborn was uh, Cain. Uh, and, and, and now we have Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve, and their firstborn is Louisa. Now, that doesn't say that it's, she's actually a, 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 an offspring of Jesus and Mary physically, but it is true that she is the first. She is the mother of the second generation of the children of light. That's what Jesus says. And uh, to get an, a, an idea of the titles that Jesus gave to Louisa, there's, I think, 285 pages of single space, single spaces of all the titles that Jesus gave to Louisa in the 36 volumes. It's astonishing who she is. And when the church, and this is what the church is doing, the church is learning about Louisa Picaretta. So when you go to your priest and the priest doesn't know anything about Louisa, it's very understandable. Uh, most priests, most bishops have never heard of Louisa Picaretta. So a lot of people that I know, they go to their parish priest and they say, you know, Father so-and-so said this. And he goes, well, that's nonsense. There's nothing in the church that says this. And according to him, that's true. But until you start reading Louisa Picaretta, then you go, my goodness, this is something that all the church has been waiting for, that Jesus has been waiting for, the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So we'll begin on volume 23, January 27th, 1928. Who is Louisa Picaretta? Okay. And so Jesus looked at the centuries as one single point, And I found, so I, Jesus, looked at the centuries as one single point, And I found you, Louisa, the chosen one. Even from that time, I directed and deposited my act in you, Louisa, in order to deposit my kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So here Jesus is saying to us that Louisa is the chosen one. Now, Louisa isn't saying this about herself. Jesus is telling us this. Okay, who is this chosen one? Who is this one? What about St. Padre Pio? What about St. Anna de Francia? What about St. Uh, Joseph? What about uh, St. Patrick? When it was Ireland, people got very upset when we said Louisa is the chosen one because St. Patrick is everything in Ireland. But it's, it's not to degrade anyone. Uh, think about the Old Testament. You had King David, you had Moses, you had Elijah, you had, um, you know, all the great prophets, you know, uh, and yet not one of them was baptized because it wasn't time. You had not one of them received the Blessed Sacrament. Not one of them was confirmed. Now, are they bad people? No, God has had something better planned after he came to earth. Uh, he, he had everything planned. What was it? What was it? And that was to bring uh, the people back to that universal life that Adam had. So he started the Holy Catholic Church, the universal church. 
Why? Because he wants us to possess this universal life. So to be Catholic is the greatest thing in the world. To be faithful and to obedient, be obedient to Christ and his church is necessary in order to receive this great gift of the divine will. If you are not faithful to Christ and his church, you cannot receive this gift. It's just, it just doesn't work. Uh, the, the, the people that have a contraceptive mentality uh, who say no to life have said no to the divine will. And what I found is those that love life, those that are open to life, those that uh, are faithful to Christ and his church, those that embrace all the dogma and doctrine of our, of our church, this universal life, love the divine will. But if you have some problem with the church, you have a problem with the divine will. It it's just has to be that way. See, because as soon as someone says no to Christ and his church, God backs off. God respects your freedom. You said no to God, he goes, okay, fine, I won't give you any more. I've, I've heard people say, well, I, I don't believe in the divine will. And I go, well, why? Because I just don't think God can do that. And, well, God is God, and God loves us, and he wants to... You cannot believe what God is going to bring upon the earth. That's why Scripture says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard of the glory that God's going to bestow upon mankind, those that love God. So he's giving us a glimpse. As a matter of fact, these 36 volumes of Louisa, Jesus says, are drips of water coming off Louisa's body as she exits the ocean, the infinite ocean of the divine will. So as you study this, as you read this, as you uh, grow into this great gift, uh, what, what is God doing? He's getting you ready to hang on to Louisa to dive into the ocean of the divine will. There are treasures, there are, there are miracles, there are beauties that have never, ever, ever, ever been seen by any human. Why? Because that is what God was going to pour upon Adam and his children for all eternity. And when Adam fell, God says, I can't give you any more. So we are basically stuck here until this body dies. And Scripture says this body is, our body is food for worms. Uh, once that body dies, then God can say, okay, let's start over. But before that, he says to Louisa, I want you to live this life. I want to give you this life. So he says, those that are worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, those that are negative are anticipating hell. Those that are peaceful, joyful, and happy are anticipating heaven. So how can we be happy in this situation when everything seems to be falling apart? It's by living in the divine will. Our, our God is giving us an opportunity to experience heaven before we die. To live heaven on earth before we die. Because that's the plan. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So what Jesus is doing, we're now at that point where the whole world is going to be consumed in flames. Uh, today at Holy Mass, we're going to consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All of Ireland is doing that today. Uh, we're going to participate with Ireland and consecrate ourselves uh, uh, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But not only ourselves, we're going to invite everyone, past, present, and future, in the divine will. We're going to link ourselves with Louisa and bring everybody into this consecration. So with our voice, God hears the voices of all mankind. He hears everyone saying to his mother, I want to be consecrated to you. She is the new ark of the covenant. She is the one, and when we are with her, there is no problems. Now, what, what we see with Noah, Noah uh, did not get wet. It's the same thing. What's coming, we are not going to be harmed. Now, everybody's going to be running in terror, wailing and grinding their teeth of what's coming. Uh, we will be peaceful, joyful, and happy. Jesus says that to Louisa. The souls living in the divine will, he says the chastisement will have little or no effect upon those souls. So God has asked us to uh, link ourselves to Louisa so that we can begin to live heaven on earth that we can really begin to be transmuted, as God says. Uh, and that's what he's going to bring about. So he says to us, I've looked at all the centuries, and I found the chosen one. 
and I have directed and deposited my acts in you, Louisa, in order to dispose my kingdom that will be on earth as it is in heaven. For just as the kingdom of redemption, I spared nothing, neither toils, nor pains, nor prayers, nor graces, not even death, so as to be able to give to all sufficient and abundant graces, and by means so that all might be saved and sanctified, even though I, Jesus, placed and secured everything in Mary, the celestial queen, and have uh, the same, excuse me, and the same now for the king. Now he's doing the same now for the kingdom of the most holy divine will. Even though I, God, have secured everything in you, Louisa, I am giving so much, and I am sparing nothing, neither teachings, nor light, nor graces, nor attractions, nor promises, in a way, in such a way that if all want to receive the great good of my divine will to let it reign within themselves, everyone, all, will find a supernatural, superabundant means and helps in order to live uh, a good so great. So he says, what I did in redemption by sanctifying the world, by, excuse me, by redeeming the world, I'm now going to do through you for sanctification. What I did with my mother for redemption, now I'm going to use you, Louisa, to bring about sanctification. And anybody who wants this can have it. Now, I can guarantee you that your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, your parishioners do not want this gift. No matter how you try to plead with them, they do not want it. Okay? Why? Well, Jesus says to Louisa that the human will is so strong that most people cannot embrace this gift. They refuse to embrace this gift because they, they, they just say, I can't believe it. I'm going to share in divinity? I don't believe that. Oh, if you don't believe that, then why do you go to Holy Mass? The priest says that every day at Holy Mass. He puts the drop of water into the chalice and he says, may we, be share, may we share in the divinity of Christ as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. God wants to demonize us. Read St. Peter. What does St. Peter say? We are going to be demonized. Oh, that's heresy. Well, well then St. Peter is a heretic. See, what's coming is so beautiful. What's coming is so important that the face of the earth is going to be transformed. That's what God's got planned. And he says that to Louisa. He says, the greatest gift that I gave to the Old Testament was transfiguration. So you see Jesus on Mount Tabor radiating like light, like the sun, greater than the light of the sun. So the outside is changed, but the inside, Jesus is still Jesus. The, our Lord, our God, our Master, our King, our Savior, our all. And then he says, the greatest gift I gave to the New Testament was transubstantiation. So that which looks like bread and tastes like bread looks, looks like bread and tastes like bread. Yet, it is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Now, Jesus says, I waited for the, for the last. Now I'm going to give the greatest gift. That's transmutation. Where the inside of the element and the outside of the element are changed into a completely new element. That's us. Our bodies are going to be glorified. Our, 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 our souls are going to be glorified. God is going to raise us up to where he breathed this breath, this Ruah, this Holy Spirit, into Adam. He wants to now breathe this into us. Now is the time for the great, tra great trans uh, uh, transmutation that's going to take place. Well, how do we know? Well, in 1900, Pope, uh, Saint Pope uh, Leo XIII consecrated the church and the world to the Holy Spirit. Uh, in 1960, uh, 61, uh, John Paul, John the 23rd prayed for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a second Pentecost. Uh, in 1998, the year of the Holy Spirit, uh, John Paul II on Pentecost Sunday of the year of the Holy Spirit said, Vene Creator Spiritus, come Holy Spirit. There's no question. Three popes uh, you know, that we, we know have said this. This is going to happen. We just heard, what was it, yesterday, the day before, that the, the, the two pontiffs are asking that the statue of Our Lady of Fatima be brought to Rome on October 13th. Okay, great things are coming. It all has to, all has to uh, link with Louisa because what God has promised Louisa is the devil is going back to hell. The kingdom is going to be established. 
It's a whole new era that's coming. So when you look around and everybody is wailing and grinding and screaming and, you know, upset, oh, my family, oh, my, my finances, oh, my health, uh, oh, everything's falling apart. We, what does Scripture say? Look up, your redemption is near at hand. God is going to bring about something that's going to be astonishing. It is so beautiful. This is what's amazing. That every Muslim, every Buddhist, every Hindu, every Protestant, every Jew is going to become a Catholic. He, Jesus tells us that in the last chapter in volume 24. What is going to happen that's going to make every Muslim say, I want Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I want to receive the Holy Eucharist. I want Mary to be my mother. I want the Holy Father to be my vicar. I want my, my, my Pope. Something great is coming. And the devil wants to make us oppressed by all the, the, the terrible things that are happening worldwide. He knows it's going to happen. He doesn't know when. And we have to be aware that we cannot be discouraged. Okay? How can you not be discouraged? By reading, studying, and putting into practice this doctrine of the divine will. What will happen as you read this, as it becomes part of your life? There's no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity, no more sin. That's what happens. Now, nobody has attained that yet. Nobody lives in the fullness of the divine will yet. That is going to happen, and I think we're going to see that. But what the Lord is asking of us to do is to prepare the way for your children, for your families, for your parishes, for your communities, for your co-workers. How? By living this abundant life, reading, studying, and putting this into practice. Therefore, Jesus, therefore, Louisa, your coming upon earth in time was awaited by me with such love and such yearning that you, Louisa, cannot even imagine because I, Jesus, wanted to deposit the many suspended acts done by my holy humanity in order to form the kingdom of the supreme will basically in you, Louisa, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, if you don't understand this, don't worry. Uh, Jesus says that he wants us newborns. And then he says to walk with him. Now, if you notice a newborn's foot is round, it can't walk. Its legs are weak. It can't walk. It has to be carried. And that's what Jesus is going to do. He is going to carry us. He, he and Our Lady, the new Adam and the new Eve, is going to carry us if we're linked to Louisa. And what, what God will bring about is a, uh, a whole new understanding of sacred scripture, of uh, when we read our breviary, when we read the lives of the saints. Uh, you, will, you will understand things that you have never, never understood before. Everything comes alive with this gift. Now remember, we're only using 10% of our brain. Okay, that's for geniuses. Well, most of us are using much less than that. So God wants us to have his thought using his mind. So he tells us that there's three things that he wants us to do. Number one, to give up our memory. Okay, Most of us live and we say, well, they said this about me and they said that about me and they did this to my family. And No, we have to, our memory has to be of Jesus. We have to fall in love with Jesus. That's why spending time in front of our Eucharistic Lord is so much necessary. You have to fall in love with Jesus. The, the second, uh, you have to give up your memory, your intellect. Um, you have to begin to see things from Christ's perspective. You can't see things from a human perspective. So when you read something and you go to your priest who hasn't read Louisa and you say, this is what's sad, the priest is going to say, never heard of it. Stay away from it. Uh, that, 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 he has to say that. Because he hasn't read this. If he sat down and read it, I mean, really read it, he would say, of course you have to do this. And, and Jesus will show you. Okay, so we have to begin to see things from the intellect, the memory, uh, the mind of Christ. And then the third, then the third thing is to give up your human will. You use your free will to choose. 
I'm going to use my free will. Do I want to live in my human misery or do I want to live in God's most holy divine will? How do I want to live? And we choose. I don't want to live in my, my human misery anymore. To understand the human misery is to understand confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. That's our human misery. I said this, I thought this, I did this. Bless me, Father, I have sinned. I forgot to do this, I avoided that. Bless me, Father, I have sinned. So what we need to do is, I don't want that life. I want to live that life that Jesus says, where we will share in his divinity. I want Jesus, I want to, Jesus breathe in my breathing. I want Jesus to beat in my heart beating. I want Jesus to walk in my walking. I want Jesus, I don't want to lose a moment with Jesus. My whole life, I want to be focused on, on my King, my Savior, my God, my all. I want him to be the Lord of my life. Every thought, every word, every deed. I don't want, I don't want to have anything to do with Satan and his works. Nothing. So we have to begin to live a life that is separate from the world. Now, as Catholics, uh, we have an obligation uh, to um, keep holy the Sabbath. The Protestants don't have to. They, I mean, I, I remember this one priest, uh, when somebody said to this priest, I want to become Catholic, he says, well, if you don't go to church on Sunday, you're going to hell. Do you still want to become a Catholic? And the person said, yes. Well, it's true. We have to keep holy the Sabbath. Okay, the devil is out there, and he's trying to seduce us. He's trying to tear us apart. He's trying to turn us away from Christ. He's trying to turn us away from the church. He's trying to turn us away from the Blessed Mother. So who's, what does the devil have? He has all of Hollywood. He has uh, all of the politics. He has all, basically now he's got the medical, uh, medical industry. Uh, he has, uh, he has uh, all the mi money, the finances. So as Catholics, what we have to do is we have to say, I have to avoid this. Now, how do you avoid a living on earth? Well, first of all, you start out with, I don't want any poison going into my brain. You know, the Muslims, what they do uh, is they want, when they, kill, when they execute somebody, they bring everybody in to watch. You have to watch this execution. You have to participate in this execution. So they bring in the women and the children. Now, Scripture says, do not participate in murder. And what they're doing is as you're watching a murder, you're participating in it. And, and so what, what the devil does is he's, in a, like in uh, Scripture, uh, Psalm 100, it says, Do not let the fornicator, the murderer, the thief, the idolater into your house. So Hollywood has all of that. And as you watch TV, as you watch movies, as you listen to hip-hop, as you listen to you know, the, the music, what are you going to do? You're going to have to brand yourself, tattoo yourself, carve yourself, pierce yourself. You're going to have to do that because the spirits are telling you to do that. This is cool. This is cool. We have to be different. See, Jesus wants us to be children of God. Jesus wants us, to, he wants to hold us. When somebody tattoos themselves, brand themselves, pierce themselves, cars themselves, what, what happens is their skin becomes their, their culture. That's what the pagans do. See, we have to be separated from that. And if, if we are not separated from that, the devil wins. He wins. You, you, can't, you can't fight supernatural. Humans cannot fight the supernatural. So Jesus has given us the sacraments and sacramentals, and unfortunately, um, most people don't use them properly if they use them. They don't. They don't. See, when you go to Holy Communion, you have to become another Christ. You, you have to become another Christ. You, you are what you eat. Okay? And that doesn't happen. Why doesn't it happen? Well, Jesus tells Louisa, when the divine will reigns, watch what will happen to those souls who receive Holy Communion. Watch what will happen. It's a whole new beginning for mankind. It's a whole new beginning for the church. 
See, this new evangelization that's going to come upon the earth is this great gift of the divine will, yet the church does not know it at this point. It was like when, in 1925, Jesus tells Louisa, the, the church said that the, uh, the Feast of Christ the King was, was, was initiated and uh, began in the church. And Jesus says, the church doesn't know what they're doing yet. I am a king. He says, but I have no kingdom. And they're getting ready, 1925, they're getting ready, they're getting the world ready through the church of the kingdom of God coming on earth as it is in heaven. So it's the same thing now. The Vatican is studying Louisa for the third time because of misunderstandings of Louisa. Uh, some people say you don't have to go to Holy Communion, you don't have to pray the rosary, you, because we're living in the divine will. That's pure foolishness. Uh, to live in the divine will is to follow Louisa. If you notice, she's, she's got a, a rosary in her hand. She prayed the rosary. She went to Holy Mass. Holy Mass was offered in her room. St. Pius X allowed that to happen. Uh, Saint, uh, excuse me, uh, Pope Leo XIII allowed that to happen to her. God allowed her to have Holy Mass celebrated in her room. Who is this Luisa Picaretta that Jesus says is going to bring about the kingdom of God, form the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven? That's what the Vatican is looking at. And uh, I can tell you that the, the people that have read Luisa are excited. The people that haven't read Luisa are worried because they're going to have to change. It's the kingdom that's coming. So Jesus says in volume 19, March 14th, 1926, so you, Louisa, will be the voice of the heavens. See, now, as you read, see, the word of God, Jesus Christ, dictated these words to Louisa. This is the only book, Jesus said, that will transform a soul. He says there's many, many books, many good books, many holy books, many saintly books. The only book that will transform a soul, Jesus says, is the book of heaven. So you, Louisa, will be the voice of the heavens. And uh, echoing from one point to another, it will make your word heard, which resounding through the whole celestial atmosphere will say, I love, I glorify, I adore my creator. Do you see how we're supposed to be living? You walk outside. This, this Canadegawa in, in the Seneca language means the chosen spot. As you walk outside, you can say, this is, this is, this is the round of creation. I love you, I glorify you, I adore you, my God my creator, my God. And as, you, as you're walking, as you're looking at the grasses, the trees, at the, 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 the lake, as the clouds, at the sky, at the sun, I love you. I, this is what Adam did. And what God will do, and I can guarantee you, as you fall in love with God, adoring him, loving him, praising him, thanking him, glorifying him, you go back to the Garden of Eden. You go back there. And then just for an instant, just for a second, and you see things in a way that you have never seen anything before. You experience things that you have never experienced before. You, Louisa, will be the voice of each star, of the sun, of the wind, of the thunder, of the sea, of the plants, of the mountains, of everything, repeating continuously, I love, I bless, I glorify, I adore, I thank the one God who created us. This, is, this is, becomes our life. See, Jesus said that Adam was to be the voice of all creation. Adam, that was his job. He says, I, Jesus says, I could have put a voice on every rock, on every plant, on every tree to adore me. He says, but I wanted man to be the voice. And Adam lost it. So now what Jesus says is, now I've breathed this into you, Louisa. You are going to begin again where Adam stopped. Now Adam fell from such a height that it took the Son of God and the Mother of God to come to earth to be the new Adam and the new Eve. That's how far we fell. And now, after 2,000 years of learning the, 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 the ABCs of the Catholic faith, now Jesus is saying, I'm going to breathe into man again this abundant life that I breathed into Adam. Do you see, Jesus tells Louisa that God loves himself. God adores himself. God praises himself. God glorifies himself. Because God is so beautiful. He is so holy. 
He is so perfect. He is so loving that God falls in love with himself. He is so he is God Almighty. And what God wanted, he's in the perfect adoration of himself. That's the Father, the Son, looking and in, in, in love with it with himself, which is the Holy Spirit. Well, God created us so that we could participate in this divine adoration. He wants us to adore him and to love him and to praise him, to participate in God. So humanly, when we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament adoring God, it's a human love. It's not divine. It's, it's a good love. It's a saintly love. It's a holy love, but it's not divine. Jesus says, now I breathe into you, Louisa, <clears throat> so that you, Louisa, can adore me perfectly. <clears throat> adore me divinely. Love me divinely. Bless me divinely. Glorify divinely. Adore me divinely. Thank me divinely. See, we, we, our, our whole heaven is to participate in God. To participate in the adoration, the divine adoration. So when we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, what the saints have taught us is to fall in love with God. So when we're there, we adore him, we love him, we praise him, we thank him, we bless him. We fall in love with God. At Holy Mass, when we receive Holy Communion, we're going to fall in love with God. More today than yesterday. More tomorrow than today. So this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to participate in his divine adoration. The devil said, I will not serve. I will not obey. I don't want this. God said, fine. What do you want? The devil says, I want hell. That's yours. You can have hell. He says to us, what do you want? Now, that's why he says, as Catholics, we have to really want this life. We have to keep holy the Sabbath. We don't do any shopping on Sunday. Remember the blue laws? You know, we're not supposed to shop. We're not supposed to shop on Sunday. We're not supposed to work on Sunday. We're supposed to keep holy the Sabbath. And you will be persecuted for that. But if you are faithful to God, God will give you a job where you can keep holy the Sabbath. It's, well, I, all I want to do is I'm not going to cook. I'm going to go out to a restaurant. Okay, then you're going to make those people work. Well, I'm not going to work, so I'm going to let them work. No, keep holy the Sabbath. See, why was Saturday night mass created? The evening mass. It was for the doctors, for the nurses, for the firemen, for the policemen. Those that had to work on Sunday. Those that had to take care of people on Sunday. It's not to make Sunday another Saturday. See, our job is to, is to get back to being Catholic. To get really back. And you, you wear the scapular. Why? Because Our Lady said wear the scapular. You pray the rosary. Why? Because Our Lady said pray the rosary. These are two weapons that you have. God wants us to participate in the sacraments and the sacramentals. Use holy water in your house. You know, if you can, pray the bravery. Uh, but what God is going to show us, what God is going to uh, lead us to, is to live a real Catholic life, which is filled with peace, joy, and happiness. Oh, how beautiful will be the voice of my newborn, Louisa, of my most holy divine will. Louisa, the little daughter of my divine will in all things. It will render the whole creation speaking, and creation will be more beautiful than if I, Jesus, had given it the use of the word. I love you, Louisa, so much that I, God, want to hear your voice in the Son, loving, adoring, glorifying God. I, want, I God, want to hear in the celestial spheres the murmuring of the sea, the darting of the fish, the birds that sing, the warb warbles of the lamb that bleats, the turtle dove that moans. I, God, want to hear you, Louisa, everywhere. This is why we need Louisa. Now, what's really wonderful is this. As you begin to pray in the divine will, as you begin to do this, God shows you how to pray. Well, how, how do you pray the round? You go outside. Well, what do you do? You listen. You look. 
Do you feel what's going on? Do you feel the wind blowing in, in, on you? You, you, you see the, the birds. You hear the birds. You, hear, you see the dogs. You hear the dogs. You, you hear the crickets. You look at the lawn. You, you, you look at the trees. Everything is moving. Everything is saying to us, I love you. Creation is echoing the love of God to us. That St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us this. The love of God is all around us. And we, we experience the love of God. Now, what do you do on Sunday? You go back to the Garden of Eden. Just go outside and sit and listen. Well, what do I do? You hear a dog bark in the distance. You say, for every dog that ever barked, I love you, I adore you, I praise you, I thank you, I bless you, I worship you. I glorify you, Lord. The, you see a, a leaf flutter. God is saying, look at this light, love you over here. Let's watch that bird fly over here. Look at all the I love yous that I want you to participate in. Well, I've got to have something to read so, so I can know what I'm doing. No. Go back to the Garden of Eden. Go out and participate in God. Walk into the water. Walk without shoes on. You know, f- you know feel the, 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 the air. Smell the air. You know, even if you smell something rotten, Lord, I adore you, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, I bless you. It's to participate in God. Let, let the Lord lead you in prayer. See, when St. Paul says pray constantly, oh, I've, I've got to have a book in front of me. I've got to be reading, you know, uh, the Pieta book. I've got to read it cover to cover. Then I'm done. Ah, I'm done. Now I can do what I want. No. What you do is you, you, you let God teach you continuously, continuously what to pray for. You hear a siren. Lord, for those souls, for all the holy souls, those that are suffering, those that are dying, you know, we, we want to participate in God. Let God lead, guide, and direct. This is what's so, so astonishing of what God is going to, to teach us. Now, this is why this book of heaven is so necessary for us. Uh, we need to uh, uh, begin to learn this doctrine. Now, I know the Archbishop has said, uh, don't publish the writings. Okay? Why? He doesn't know who translated them. Okay? And you've got, uh, I know in the, uh, the uh, Spanish language, there are, I know of at least four different people that are, that are translating. And I know at least... I'll just say one isn't very good. Uh, he's doing it for, for, mo- for money, for income. Uh, so the archbishop doesn't know who's translating. But if you have these writings, Jesus has given them to you. Okay? Uh, you can share them with your loved ones. There's nothing wrong with that. These are not forbidden readings. Uh, anybody can read these. The archbishop is just worried, who translated it? What's the reason they translated it? Is it a good translation or not? That's what he's concerned about. And he says, please wait for the official. Then you really know what she says. So, for example, when somebody says, well, I don't have to go to uh, confession anymore. I don't have to go to mass anymore. I don't have to pray the rosary anymore. And their bishop hears about this. The bishop's going to condemn this. And then they write to the Vatican. This is what Luisa Picaretta says. And this is why the third time they're studying Luisa. Where did she say this? Where did she say this, that you don't have to go to mass anymore? And it's, it's, a, it's a misunderstanding. That's why you ha- should have clergy directing you. It should be a bishop, a priest, or a deacon. That's the, they have been uh, given this gift by God. It, it's, it's as... See, this is the first bread. There's three breads. The, the third bread is the wonder bread that you buy in the store. The daily bread. The second bread is the super substantial bread of the Holy Eucharist. The body, blood, soul, and the divinity of Christ. The first bread is the bread that Adam ate. And that's what God wants to give back to us. I have a food that you do not know of. And that is to do the will of God. And that's he's going to teach us how to live in the will of God. So we'll end there. and We'll be back in 15 minutes in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, for your lessons of today, free me from living one single instant outside of your will, Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life 
except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.